Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this uh, time together. Thank you for the ability to use our uh, talents, our gifts, uh, pro uh, productively. And uh, therefore, we pray that these uh, uh, little podcasts may uh, be a blessing to those who listen. May it uh, help people get out of themselves and uh, look at uh, the Word of God and their faith and their practice as uh, important and uh, therefore free, free people from uh, the heaviness of introspection and self-inspection. Uh, uh, self and um, we, we pray that you would uh, use these tapes for uh, your glory and the uh, hastening of the coming of your kingdom. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, this is Eric in New York City, and I'm producing podcasts. As this one is first in a series. Uh, uh, it is especially for my friend Joan in Connecticut. I said I would say something about uh, uh, black car driving, what it's like to be a chauffeur in New York City. And so I'm going to talk a bit about uh, being a chauffeur in New York City for upscale clientele. First of all, I just start in the middle rather than go all the way back. I worked several years for a Surrey limousine service on East 77th Street. I should give you some kind of feeling of what this kind of garage feels like. It's uh, an old uh, stable. It could easily have been a horse stable a hundred years ago. It still has sort of uh, wagon wheel bumpers on the sides of the doors. I don't know if you know what a wagon wheel bumper is, but it's a, a rising iron structure on the side of the door. And um, the wagon wheels, if they hit it, would slide off it. And so they wouldn't crash into the, the jam of the door and, and break off the wheel. And so it's an old building big old loft and just disgustingly dirty. I mean upstairs is totally a horror and um, the bathroom is so bad that I called the Department of Labor and they came and investigated and forced Surrey to improve the bathroom. I learned from working with Surrey that it's against the law to have no bathroom or a bathroom that's difficult to use. Uh, you have to have a readily accessible bathroom. These garages can be, you know, awfully stark places. They're, as I say it sometimes, it, it ain't Hollywood. Um, these are not pretty people and they're not pretty situations. And. Um, Surrey is owned and uh, run by uh, Mr. Chulo. He's a uh, rather uh, dynamic uh, individual. He likes to wear tight, silky shirts, open at the collar, strong men's cologne, and he talks loud, has a girlfriend around, uh, and uh, with the girlfriend, a couple of her daughters. What well, was fun about being interviewed for Surrey Limousine was they brought me in front of two of the managers and they asked me uh, what I had done before this. And uh, I kind of uh, pretended to be French Foreign Legion. I said, I thought when you become a limousine driver, you can be uh, uh, secretive about your past. And they said, yeah, yeah, so you're hired. Um, they seem to agree with me. Sometimes called me a gentleman's gentleman because I went to Harvard, but eventually these people realize that I'm a flake, a lightweight, and no great threat, and then they fire me. Um, and I'm not so good as a driver, and I'm not so good with uh, passengers. Some of the passengers like me, but some of the passengers complain. 
about me that I'm too old, too unsteady. There's always something wrong. It didn't help with the suitcase. At these prices, this service isn't good enough. And I complain right away with these companies, and I've worked for four or five of them, that I can't work late Saturday night or Sunday. Late Saturday night is an insanity. It is just often very, very uh, difficult on Saturday nights uh, driving a limousine in New York. And I'll tell you on another podcast about a Saturday night in New York. Uh, the other thing is that I say I have to get off on Sunday because I go to a Protestant church on Sunday. Sometimes they're very cool about that. That means they don't like it. But always these companies fold because it seems to be a federal law in America that you cannot prevent an employee from uh, having commitments uh, that are moral and religious on uh, the weekends uh, for the Jews Saturdays and for Christian Sundays. The uh, attitude towards customers was that they, you don't have to talk to them much, don't get involved with them, uh, that uh, they are sort of like uh, angry dogs. You don't want to get them angry and uh, barking or, or biting. And so they uh, advised us to be very uh, quiet with the customers. Um, uh, the, don't look them in the eye. Don't try to get too friendly with them. So that was uh, part of the attitude towards the customers. Here's an example of uh, my early days at Surrey, which I, I greatly appreciated. Uh, I, they sent me out on uh, this uh, Saturday night, and I go out with a Greek ship, shipping ty tycoon. And he, he takes me down to the uh, meatpacking district and he calls every hour or so and says, meet me here. And I studiously meet him there, but he's not there. And then he calls up and says, okay, meet me here. And again, I go to the address and he's not there. And finally, at 5 o'clock in the morning, he staggers into the wrong car. He's been drunk, and he gets in the wrong car and drives off in the wrong car, even though it's a Surrey car. So I come back to the garage with an empty car, and the dispatcher, who is an old, not when I say old, I mean he's a seasoned um, dispatcher. He, he has bad walking problems and he's he's grumpy and tough and he I, I said you know I'm sorry he said Tommy the dispatcher says to me says I don't want to hear about it go home it never happened delete and I have tears coming down my face in joy that this dispatcher knows what the story is and he just has no patience to run over the 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 events and he says go home it never happened I don't want to hear about it and that was one of the most pleasant experiences I ever had with a dispatcher and other times Tommy was really rough you know he would curse me out and there would be bad times but this was one time when I was grateful for a dispatcher who who just knew the ropes and knew exactly what had happened and had no desire whatsoever to rerun this uh, awful experience. Another time a dispatcher showed terrific wisdom is a lady called him from Philadelphia during a snowstorm and said, can you send me a car? Uh, and the dispatcher said, no, ma'am, it's two o'clock in the morning, and I can't risk the, uh, the health of my driver. I, won't, I can't risk the danger of driving to Philadelphia at two o'clock in the morning in the snow. 
and I thought that was an awfully wise judgment call. So this is some ways in which you grow to have admiration for your co-workers in the driving field. This is the end of this section. It is just an introduction to Surrey, one of the companies I worked for, uh, with some gratitude and some sort of uh, wit and wisdom about uh, what it's like to, to work in the black car trade. See you later.